Hi, good day. In our previous lesson, you learned about heat as a form of energy that can be transferred through conduction, convection, and radiation. You identify the conditions that are necessary for these processes to occur and perform activities that allow you to investigate the different modes of heat transfer. Finally, you will learn to distinguish between insulators and conductors of heat and were able to identify the uses of each. Are you ready to learn? Let's go and welcome to my virtual science lesson. This is Teacher Ray, Teacher Regina F. Hernandez, and I will be your teacher for this day. Now, you will learn about another form of energy which you encounter in everyday life, which is the electricity. You must be familiar with this energy since it is energy required to operate appliances, gadgets, and machines, to name a few. Aside from this Many devices, the ever-present nature of electricity is demonstrated by lightning and the motion of living organisms which is made possible by electrical signals sent between cells. However, in spite of the familiar existence of electricity, many people do not know that it actually originates from motion of charges. Experience passing in front of turned on television right after you take a bath? What did you feel? How about playing a newly bought plastic cover in your hair? What happened to the strands of your hair? These phenomenon happens most of the time, and other things similar to this can be explained scientifically. So today, let us explore the world of charges. Allow me to read first our lesson objectives. Identify the different types of charges and describe how objects can be charged. Let us tackle first electric charges. All of us here in this world are made up of atoms, and atoms have subatomic particles, which are the protons, the neutrons, that found in the nucleus and the electrons which is located outside the nucleus. The protons is the positively charged particle of an atom, while the neutron is the no charge or the neutral charge of an atom. And the electrons which is negatively charged. Protons and electrons play an important role when it comes to charging. In atom, a positively charged nucleus is surrounded by electrons. Did you ever experience or have you tried to extend your hand near in an open television? What did you notice? Your hair are going towards to the screen of the television. That is what we call static electricity, electric charges at rest. And based on the law of electric charges, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. The protons in the nucleus attract the electrons, while the electrons repel each other. This attraction and repulsion behavior gives an object its charge. Like we have positive and negative, it will attract. A positive and a positive, it will repel. A negative and a negative, it will repel. So let us now proceed to the different types of charging processes. We have three, charging by friction, 
charging by conduction, and charging by induction. Charging by friction is rubbing two objects together allow electrons to move from one object to another. Electrons are moved from one object to another for being scrapped away. Items may be charged by contact. Electrons are moved without being scraped off. Examples, sacks on carpet, clothes in a dryer. Before we proceed to the two remaining types of charging processes, let us define first what we mean in a conductor and insulators. Conductor. These are materials which allow electric charge to flow freely. An example of good conductors are metals because their outer electrons are not bound tightly. In contrast, insulators are materials which do not allow electric charge to flow freely. Example, grass, rubber band, porcelain. So what is charging by conduction? Conduction is the transfer of electrons from a charged object to another object by direct contact. If a negative object touches neutral body, electrons will spread on both objects. Both objects become negatively charged. While charging by induction is, induction is the movement of electrons to one part of the object. Induction is the charging of an object without contact. Electrons move within the object, making the closest side of positively charged. We're done learning about the different types of charging processes. And always remember this. Charges cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be transferred from one material to another. The total charge in a system must remain constant. That is the law of conservation of charge. In summary, objects are electrically charged in one three ways. By friction, when electrons are rubbed from one object to another. By contact, when electrons are transferred through direct contact without rubbing. And through induction, when electrons are gathered or dispersed by the presence of nearby charge. And that is our lesson for today. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something on this day. Thank you and God bless everyone.